I'm Alexandra Kreis and you're listening to Outer Travel in a Journey. In my own search for self-understanding, I have met people from all walks of life. I bring to you a taste of these encounters. Welcome to Outer Travel in a Journey. My name is Alexandra and today on, I have on my show Julie Williams from Ireland, Dublin. Is it Julie? Is it Dublin still? Greystones, but close enough to Dublin. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yes, Greystones <laughs> is somewhere else if you once lived in Dublin, that's true. <laughs> Hello, thank you for taking the time, Julie, um, to come onto this show. I invited you because I got to know you once through the ancestral work you're doing, the healing work you're doing, and the quantum healing work you're doing. And you have developed quite a lot since then. You've come from a career of being a um, gene, I can't say, genealogist. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, geneticist, yeah, geneticist. molecular biology. Yeah, geneticist. I can't read my own handwriting. <laughs> So geneticist, so you come, you're coming from a science background and now you're deep into healing and therapies and opening up the umbrella of conscious medicine for people here. So yeah, can you tell us a little bit to get to know you, where did you come from in this process exactly? What was the turning point in your life? Mm. Yeah, I'd be happy to share share my story. You know, I was always a very sensitive child, and I was too sensitive for the for the family. Um, and you know, I really believe early in my life I shut down all those intuitive and empathic abilities that um, that I had. And I found science, and I really loved science in a way of, you know, curiosity and asking questions and how do things work and what makes things tick and uh, so I trained and got my degree in biology and genetics and worked in research, pharmaceuticals, clinical research um, for quite some time. And in the process, worked my way up through kind of the management chain, you know, out mm. of the lab and into into management and corporations. And at that same time, I started my own personal growth process because I think I was living in Boulder, Colorado at the time. Everybody had a therapist. I wanted one. So I went and got a therapist and started my journey. And <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. yes. Yeah. Um, and then I just began to realize as the years that unfolded in that and the more successful I became in the business world, mm. I actually, it wasn't making me happy. Mm. All of that, you know, success factors that people would say, you know, I attained all of those and it was, it was beautiful, but there was still something within me that didn't feel fulfilled. And this is what prompted me onto this personal growth process that eventually aligned me more with my truth, whatever we call it, the awakening, the alignment, the, what is my truth and how can I be free and what do I want in life? And as I began to change internally, my external world also aligned with that where now I left the corporate world and with great financial support, which was beautiful and now work my passion and have just created this life that I only dreamed of um, yeah. in a way that doing it so easily and effortlessly in aligning and believing that it was possible, that it happened. Uh, I really like to inspire people to let them know that if they feel stuck where they are now, um, yeah. to have these ideas of where we want to go and the what we want to create it's i'm living proof it's possible mm. <laughs> well, yeah and people are really scared i see that that a lot of people come into this knowledge of that when they're just thinking that the career path is the only path and the career path is conventional traditional tied to money and titles and so on so on forth but uh many people are super afraid of letting go. What helped you letting go in that process of what it feels like a secure place for us these days? Well, I can tell you it wasn't a secure. <laughs> what really prompted me is I was miserable. I mean, I would leave work in tears, you know, because it just, 
it just wasn't working and all I could do was cry I, you know and I, it might sound dramatic I'm not much of a crier but you know the best part of my day would be to see the doorman at the bu the building or the guys who parked my cars you know they had the most joy of what they were doing and um, I just thought you know what I'm miserable I, I'm really not happy and I keep trying the more the more promotions I get or the more stock options I get or the more salary I get or the shinier car that I get is actually not making me any happier it's actually drawing more fear because now I'm tied to this lifestyle and I felt trapped in that so it was that you know if I let go of my salary how am I going to be able to manage this lifestyle? And the fear aligns yeah. the truth, like the whole inner turmoil, inner conflict. Um, mm. And actually, I just really did a lot of meditation and aligning myself and putting it out there from the heart of the what I wanted. Without the how, I was going to do it because I couldn't see a way out. I was so in the dark. And just put the what out. And things started to change for me. And, you know, for example, the way that I got out of corporate was like I called into my manager's office one day and he said, you know, we love the contributions that you make in this organization. I'd be the one that would have ideas and then they'd go into production. One of those ideas was done in production. And he said, you can either go find another place in the organization, bring one of your great ideas, or we will hand you eight months salary and you can walk out the door right now. Right. Uh -huh. So this was the answer to my prayer. Right. I had been sitting and going, yeah. I really what I want to create, what I want to create. And rather than getting in that, you know, state and just trying to hold that and that stillness. And then the universe and when it was time, that's the thing. I think we get a little impatient, don't we? And we want yeah. things to change. Sorry. We yeah. want things to change really, really quickly. Uh, and it was just about sitting with it and sitting with it. And then the universe said, now, now, my beloved, it's your time. Here it is. Here's, here's what you need to go start um, your next career. And were you trained in the meantime in the work you were offering first? Was that quantum healing or whatever you did first? I was training in um, a lot of different things from massage to energy medicine, energy healing to NLP neuro-linguistic mm. programming, uh, to family constellation work. And so in my corporate time, I would take holidays and I would take, I would go on retreats or I would take these certification programs. That's what I did on my, my time off. So I had accrued a lot of these certifications and they, but I didn't, they were all standalone. I didn't know how to, to bring them together, what that would look like, how I would support myself uh, or anything. I had, I had no idea. Um, and so that, package I got leaving the corporate when they said great it's time for you gave me the space and the time to sit mm. again mm. in that meditative what do I want right I want to create a job that I'm passionate about I want to bring all of my certifications together into a practice I want to help people right yeah. I want to set my own you know schedule I want to travel I mean these were just the characteristics I wasn't trying to think of how or where or what or when just the the what yeah uh, and that's when you know my life just took a complete turn I was living in San Francisco I met some people in Ireland when I was on retreat I ended up coming over to visit my work started to take off over here uh, and really embraced where I could bring all of those certifications together in one practice mm. so I left California and I moved to Ireland and established myself here I mean if you had told me that that would been what you know I was going to do it how I was going to do it at the time I would have told you you were crazy so yeah. yeah yeah that is a lot of trust in the universal making how was that for you it was that always something you uh, would follow because a lot of people that I know that are in the scientific world they have a hard time coming into a deeper trust I believe because uh, science is all around around making visible to me. And there, there you are, you know, trained 12 years or you worked 12 years in this field and then trained as well before that. And now suddenly you're giving this all up. What was, uh, what helped you? Hmm. I think what helped me was aligning with my truth. And that might sound simple, but simply asking myself, 
what are my needs right now? What is my truth? Just because I'm good at something, I was really good at the corporate job, but I didn't like it. So just because I was good at something, that was sort of my, how I would find my way into positions. Oh, I'd be really good. Great. I must need to be, you know, this must be what I'm supposed to do. And then I would do it, but it felt constricted. Right. I also had mentors and teachers, you know, I took Mm. all these different classes and certifications and ran out of those and would find somebody and say, would you be my mentor? And so I always did have somebody there by my side to help me keep perspective rather than getting, you know, getting out of that groove. you got to lift up out of a groove and set yourself into another one. And it Mm. really helps to have that support to be able to do that. To me, you just touched upon so many key points that I noticed of late that was highlighted in my latest mentoring education, you know, like becoming a coach. What what I hear you saying is, A, you have to have a dream. You know, you unearthed the dream that you had. You were in, in the, and you held it preciously as something in your mind without wanting to have the solution. And then you've kind of applied, how does that look like? So you really broke it down to me as practical steps and ended up then do leaping out of what Gay Hendricks, if you're familiar with his work, the big leap um, mm-hmm. called, you know, moving from the zone of excellence into the zone of genius, because definitely you landed somewhere <laughs> where you're hitting the sweet spot uh, and where this is all coming through you and into this world, right? Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. It's been a remarkable, a remarkable journey. And, you know, to really trust in uncertainty is one of the most difficult things to do, I think, you know, and really feeling, you know, one of the things that really helped me was the family constellation work. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever experienced that in the group format, but when, you know, it's done in a group format and there's a, you know, that family soul that there's something that comes through that's greater than all of us in the room. And, Mm -hmm you can really feel that, that you're supported by this greater force, whether it's our ancestors, whatever you want to call it, ancestral soul fields, you know, and as a scientist, I'm very aware and observant. And when I felt that for the first time, I thought, whoa, there's something, there's something bigger here that is actually supporting us and wants us to win. So maybe if I kind of connect in with that (laughs) and I put my co-creative forces out there, perhaps I can gain momentum. And that's exactly what happened. So what happens in a, I remember I've been to one of your family group constellation and Mm. there is different form of family constellations. Uh, One is in psychology where they also talk, but I remembered what made yours different to me because it's energy. It was energy work to me because we were just being placed into positioning towards each other, but maybe you can, tell a little bit about how that works sure well the traditional format is that we sit in a circle and then we have one person who's the client and then we will address whatever issue they're presenting with and then we open up and we ask representatives for those observing to stand in or represent members of their family or issues whatever we need to look at And the idea is, is that as we bring those representatives into the field, we can then see the interrelationships of the systemic nature of what's going on in the family. Anybody who was excluded or forgotten about or secrets or guilt or shames, these are going to cause disruptions in the flow of love through the family soul where suffering will come down through. So the idea behind releasing the issues is to release the suffering by re-including everybody in the family so that love can flow through. And the way we do that as facilitators is by by moving those representatives or having them speak to each other or because I come from a body work massage background, sometimes I'll put that into motion. Hmm. Um, But it is reading the energy of the field. Uh, And again, it's, it's an energy that's full of love. The family soul, this force wants us to live our life in full abundance it wants us to fulfill our divine purpose of the life force that's within us and so it that that whole bringing that into harmony and balance is such a it's it's beautiful i absolutely love the work i don't know if that answered your question i got a little bit yeah um it is beautiful and it's really hard to describe uh what came up for me when you talked about this uh is that 
I remember the conversation I had with somebody else the other day who also works in the science background, and she went back to look at what happened in the 40s, I mean, continental Europe, war and everything, and how at least where I'm, I grew up, you know, how we, our parents and grandparents were trained to be so self-sufficient because they could suddenly only rely on themselves and a little bit of networking and all the guilt and the blame that came along depending on which country country you came from here i'm german so the guilt is very big and what i noticed the more individual we got the more we achieved as individuals as group and then as individuals you know that career path is that we always are trying to heal ourselves from that perspective. And what I heard you saying is actually the opposite. You know, there is so much out there that could help us to reconnect and that we are not alone and that don't, we, need, we don't need to go this alone. And most of all, if we tap into that bigger um, akasha, as we say in, in yoga, you know, into this storage of memory, around us, then we have um, a bigger chance to, to get well and to just be and live our lives. Yeah, you're exactly right. You know, and the, the fund one, one of the fundamental premises under family constellation work is to release the entanglements to suffering. It's not about cutting the ties, right? It's about re-including everybody so that everybody in the family has their place we call that the orders of love. They have their place because when they're not able to take their place, somebody else is going to stand in their place and get caught up in the suffering. So that's what we call an ancestral entanglement in that way. So yeah. that re-inclusion is so beautiful. Yeah, as we all have our path to go and our own dharma, our what we need to do as we hear from the Bhagavad Gita and all that. And sometimes that dharma is not so so easy to fulfill and it might seem like a hurtful hurtful position to somebody else and then as you say there is this negative entanglement and you're just talking about releasing that into the purpose of that we all grow with each other is that correct yeah yes so that love can be the connector rather than the suffering right that yeah. we stay loyal to our family and belonging to our family by reliving the suffering in whatever ways that are that is so you talk about, you know, in the early 40s, you know, and or yeah, like the beginning of World War II around that time, right? Like that made a tremendous impact, for example, in our ancestral past, right? And so we, you know, part of, you know, what I believe this COVID thing to be is a replay of that time in history, right? So we replay a certain suffering under different conditions but in a way they're very similar, right? Mm. And as we survive that, it helps to release and clear that energy on a bigger bigger frame. So the same thing in the family work, you know, as we work to re-include everybody, we clear that suffering so that mm. we can really fulfill our dharma. We can really embrace life and channel that into things that help us and help our communities and ultimately help the entire world. I hear you always saying we, so what is this family constellation called? Is there a trademark or how do we recognize that particular work you do besides like looking at your bio and your... <laughs> yeah, well, family What's constellation that? work is actually developed by Bert Hellinger. So that is, that is a modality, right? Mm. A therapy of healing, right? Mm. So I bring that under the umbrella of what I call consciousness medicine which is the idea is that we use the power of consciousness, which is not here, but here, mm. right? Our connection to space. life force, the unity consciousness. When we drop into that space, that's where healing happens. Mm. And so then bringing the toolbox of whether it's an ancestral entanglement that needs to be released or a belief that needs to be revised or energetic disturbance that needs to be harmonized, uh, we can do that from that place of consciousness. Yeah. And how how many times does one need to go through these ceremonies or constellation forms well that varies right it, it really kind of depends on what's happened how severe the trauma was how many times somebody experienced trauma in their childhood how deep it runs you know um that kind of a that kind of a thing 
I've come up with what I call movements of the family soul. And these are the main movements um, that when they're done in order and do those main movements, we will work our family soul in a way that we will be pretty much free from, we'll have a choice. We'll have more of a choice, put it that way, of whether we want to operate from love or operate from suffering uh, in that way. So, you know, it's not really a one size fits all, but I do notice with family constellation work that it, it, in my experience and opinion, there's no other work that is this profound that gets the very, 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 very deep connections, right? These egoic connections or the old conditionings that we get so tangled up in to really release those. So to any personal growth process, anything that you've done to work these ancestral components helps to integrate it fully and for all of that healing to drop in in a way that it wasn't really allowed to before. Right. Wow. I just kind of have to take a breath here then because I can almost, (laughs) oh no, because I feel like the more you describe it, the more I'm sinking into, you know, acknowledging that we have to sometimes look back in the back, in the best way, like ancestral work is so much looking back. That's what it feels like to me. So, uh, and as I'm looking back, I find it hard to look forward (laughs) to this conversation, but um, yeah, I totally lost lost track. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it's interesting because there's, you know, in my work, right, I call it spatial sorting. So I'm in the present and then there's a past version and then there's a future version, right? And so being able to know what those are, we know what's happening in the present. We know what they want to be experiencing in the future. And we've got to go and unwire the old conditioning and revise, Mm -hmm. you know, and release the entanglements so that they can be fully present before moving into that, that desired state. And I'm always working in those three ways because I want to know what, you know, what does God most want for this person, right? Mm. What does the divine most want for this person? They may not even know it for themselves. So that's the job, you know, yourself as a coach and working with people in that way. We hold that in our heart so that we can unwire the conditioning. So when they land in the present, it's like a tractor beam that pulls them into that experience. What is one of your fondest memories? If you were allowed to share something out of the family constellation, can you make it a little bit more tangible for us? Mm. I mean, this work personally changed my life from you know that was one of the things that moved me from corporate into what i do now is by Mm -hmm. releasing these the ancestral suffering and the entanglements that i had and so you know from the perspective of i found myself in family constellation work because i was looking for my beloved my relationship you know who's where is my this life partner and i was having a series of relationships that just they kind of ended all the same i was that same pattern i know we a lot of us experience that and i was curious to what is this pattern I keep running why can't I get into these find these men who will commit and be in a relationship that will work long term and in the constellation work in the family constellation work it was discovered that I actually was a womb twin right so there's multiple fertilized embryos right and then one makes it into life that's me right and so my brother doesn't make it so I spend my life looking for my brother in relationship Mm. versus a partner you see and so that's why it never worked because I could you know that dynamic kept replaying as I look for this energy of the soul like this one that was lost I'm always going to lose that one Mm. right so for me that was my first experience with family constellation work and it changed everything it changed me understanding myself better it took me understanding what I was doing, how I was acting, what I was searching for, you know, all of these things. And it allowed me to just be able to bring full honor and respect to, you know, whether that's a story of a womb twin, you know, or whether that's real, it doesn't really matter. Because the healing that happened from that moment, just shifted my life into a direction. Um, Mm -hmm. Kind of one of those things you never you can't go back the other way. Yeah. Uh, Well, that's the thing you said earlier, not in this interview, but that your story is one, not like this big bang thing that happened to Eckhart Tolle, but it was 
fractional to awake and awake with every process you go. And I found that so beautiful because when you look more and more into a spiritual awakening stories of modern people, you often hear only the ones that attract this amazing kind of uh, headlines and you didn't, but uh, somehow that's also in my eyes, it can be a better place to, to slowly awake to that and, and to keep coming in. Right. So yeah. thanks for saying that. Yeah. Because it's like, I mean, I tried, right, in writing books and things. I tried to come up with the the big awful thing that happened that made me, you know, and I just, I mean, I could, I could have created it, you know, like yeah. there's enough little things that happened, but I yeah. just thought, hang on, wait a minute, like, what if, what if I had a good upbringing? What if I, you know, was nourished and, and nurtured? And of course, every parent has, you know, has their, their thing. So, you know, it's fine, but my upbringing you know, well-educated and, you know, financially independent from a young age and not a lot of trauma going on there, right? Uh, yet, okay, I found myself in this place, right? So it's interesting to be able to, you know, yes, yeah, sometimes it takes an awakening like that, but sometimes to kind of just walk that path, right? And with each stepping stone on my path, discovering something so deep about myself and so wonderful that led to the next step and that has you know been the last 20 years of my life it's been amazing wow. yeah and that's also a deep respect you have for the process because we can so easily think it's not happening while it is happening and it takes actually more awareness i think or a more Yes, more trust, as we've said earlier, you know, to really recognize that these are all steps to help you to awake to, to what you wanted to bring forward as your, to every client that sees you and every listener that's listening right now to us. And that is, um, how did you put it with the light? Do you want to, do you remember what it is? Oh, that this, what we seek, right? This, whatever you call it, this you know, liberation, I like to call it more than enlightenment, because it does mm. feel like a freedom and a liberation, right? And this light that we seek, this liberation that we seek, the, the divine within us that we seek externally, right? Some people do this personal growth, some people do this through addiction, right? Mm. Trying to seek something outside. And then eventually, you seek enough that it leads you back home, right? And you realize that that's been within you, the entire time and it always has been and it always will be and so that moment of I think that's the moment of liberation and realizing that yes you know this is within me it's around me it's everything mm. and that seeking no longer needs to be done from a place of lack it can be done from a place of wholeness and how can I elevate myself the collective and the whole through what I do as an individual yeah. Will you elaborate a little bit more before we part why you took this ancestral healing the family can constellation under a broader umbrella? Why are the other tools, and you might want to name them as we haven't talked about them, why are they necessary for evolvement? Okay. Sure. Yeah. The way that I see it is that we're a matrix of bodies. Okay, we have our physical body, right? We have an emotional body, an energetic body, ancestral and spiritual body, okay? So when there's an issue, when somebody presents with an issue, right? If we just treat it on the physical body, for example, right? But it's really, it, it's an aspect in the emotional, energetic and ancestral body and spiritual body, right? We're not gonna get anywhere with it, right? Same with the emotional. If it's an emotional component, right? But it also lives in the physical and it's going to have an ancestral component to it. We're not gonna be able to free it up. Okay. Mm. So over the years of the certifications, I've realized that, like, how do we promote lasting change? How do we have a change that doesn't just go for a week or two and then bungee back? Mm. And that's where this idea of the consciousness medicine, this, this umbrella of, okay, I'm going to work the physical body, you know, from the organ systems, from the musculoskeletal systems, down to cellular biology, receptors, genetics, since I have all that understanding, right? Uh, treating the microbiome, I do a lot, right? You know, we've got all these organisms in our body, right, mm. that help us function, and that's got to yeah. be all nice and harmonized, right? Balancing, How do you treat them, Julie? 
Uh, it's that power of consciousness. So from the place of dropping into what I call the presence of healing, and mm. I sort of make that motion because it looks a little, it's a bit like that where you drop into the heart, right? Mm. And you tune into that healing frequency, good, like that. And then the power of intention mm. with that can help create and discreate. And that's the, the quantum physics principles okay. that support the work as well, where we can create and discreate realities by where we put our attention yeah. in that way. So it's a presence of being rather than a doing. It's kind of a being. Um, and then treating, you know, with the belief structures, you know, mm -hmm. aligning your limiting belief structures to success factors that you want to achieve, releasing the ancestral entanglements mm -hmm. so that the puppet strings are released so that you can actually get what you want, right? Uh, and just working those different bodies, I found you can always find the issues going to be somewhere in all those bodies, right? Mm -hmm. And so working those as a matrix until there's an alignment. And then that is more of that lasting change. Yeah. And sometimes we m m might want something that, you know, the universe doesn't want for us, that the divine doesn't want for us. So how does that show up in your work to change that frame of mind? And sometimes we think, oh, we need to have like that big house, I don't know, in Hawaii at the beach. And, and maybe that's not what we are intended to do. So where does that show up in your work? Well, it comes back to, I believe, and operate from a place that everything's happening in divine order, all of it. You're always in the right place, doing the right thing at the right time. Always. You can never get it wrong. There's no wrong answers. There's no wrong decisions. There's no wrong moves. There's no wrong places. And it's amazing to let go of that thinking, right? Once you just eliminate that and say, okay, this is all in divine order. So even if it's horrible, And it feels really difficult, which you know yourself, you know, to move through some of these deeper patterns. It's not unicorns and rainbows. It's, it's you got to get dirty. You got to get in the muck. And it doesn't mm -hmm. sometimes feel so good, but that's okay, right? Because mm -hmm. you can get through that yeah. in that way. So, so it's back to that trust and really just releasing anything, you know, wrong or we can't get it wrong. Right? And living from that place, it just brings so much joy and confidence, you know, and trust to be supported by those, those forces. Beautiful. So as we are about to part, um, maybe you want to just let the listener know where they can find you most recently. What is on offer with Julie? Sure. Yeah, the best place to go for information is my website, which is www.consciousness-medicine.com. And that has all the information on my one-to-one -one work. I have some online programs that are coming out because retreats are not going to happen until 2021 and workshops. Uh, and I also do trainings. I also uh, train facilitators and practitioners. So it's all available on, on the website. Brilliant. Well, thank you for taking time again. And it was really nice to reconnect with you, Julie, and have this conversation. Great. My pleasure. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah. It was really good to have you. And thank you, listener, again and again for showing up every week and listening. And let us know your thoughts. You can do this these days on the Facebook page connected to this podcast. So if you have questions for Julie, that's a good place to ask them. And I make Julie answer them. So absolutely yeah absolutely here the show i love questions yeah yes we <laughs> love questions come on let us know what's irking you or even what is poking you <laughs> okay bye for now and see you next week great thanks so much if you enjoy listening to my podcast please consider to become a patron at patreon.com slash alexandra kreis and pledge your donation 